in children under age 10 or 9, I think it's totally normal to use teas uh, for expansion. There is no need to use bone anchors. I never use bone anchor, anchors under age 9 or 10. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. But I design uh, expanders so they are very retentive on the primary teeth. And I try to use as minimal as possible permanent teeth for expansion. Um, so ideal time uh, to expand uh, the jaw is actually in early, uh, uh, in established actually primary dentition or very early mixed dentition. Uh, mm-hmm. So when I have a child that is four, they have mature roots in the primary molars. So those roots are solid in the bone, and I think those are excellent anchors to use for expansion. If I use, if I have a, a six-year-old uh, child, uh, I, uh, as a periodontist, don't recommend uh, exclusively using the first uh, molars, permanent molars for expanders, because the first molars erupt at age six, and th- those roots are not. Uh, fully uh, periodontally mature. So as soon as the first molar erupts, you put uh, strong orthopedic forces on those molars, they are going to tip. Hmm. So when we have a six-year-old child, I think it's still great age to expand. And uh, the six uh, the six has erupted, I will use them for expansion, but I will also utilize the E's and D's, which are primary molars uh, with still good root formation, mature root formation for expansion. So I will use both uh, sides of the maxilla with like six teeth as one unit to get as much skeletal expansion as I get. Mm -hmm. If you take a nine-year-old child, those primary molars have lost at least 50% of the root. So all the forces that you are going to apply to the teeth at that age, if you use the primary molars, and if you use the permanent molars, are going to be on the permanent teeth, and you will get very little benefit from anchoring against the primary teeth unless they are ankylosed or fused to bone. Uh, so that's why age sometimes, if it is age nine, I tell the parents that we kind of miss the window to get a good skeletal expansion with the two supported expander, and some of these children may not be ready for a bone anchor expander because the teeth are erupting and i like to use like a special acrylic type implant assisted expander for young um, adolescent patients Uh, so you may be able to use mse uh, with additional like two implants and bands on sexes or sometimes if uh, you still have enough room for the teeth to erupt and there are no airway issues sometimes it is better to wait until they are in the permanent dentition and and do the implant assisted expander at age 11. Mm -hmm. but i think it's nonsense to use implants in a six year old or five year old Uh, basically we have technology today to utilize teeth to expand young children uh, utilize teeth for anchorage with um, 3d printed or acrylic expanders that offer very good anchorage and stability and very nice uh, opening of the bone. And and when you use uh, teeth as anchors in a six or a five or a six or a seven year old during that special window that you described, are you actually getting a, a diastema? Are you splitting the maxilla or is there some other growth mechanism occurring on the alveolar side? When we talk about skeletal expansion, whether it is adults or children, that means that we are opening with palatal suture at the minimum. Usually, mm-hmm. other, if it is done without surgery, and in children, expansion is done without surgery, that means that we are opening with facial sutures. So the whole mid face is going to have a change at the level of the sutures. Uh, that means that the mid palatal suture should open. That means that some of the uh, frontonasal sutures are going to be uh, remodeling. Uh, sometimes uh, children have even a patent suture between the nasal right and left bones. That suture will open, and also the gomatic or temporal sutures will open. Mm-hmm. And we have CBCTs to support it. Mm-hmm. Um, if, 
if you uh, use some of the, uh, but I also use palatal, special palatal uh, plastic shields to allow that uh, optimal skeletal expansion actually to happen. If you just use the teeth and there is a space between the screw and the palate, usually you also will get a banding of the alveolar bone and tipping of the teeth. Not all of the expanders are going to have uh, no or minimal tipping. Some of the expanders will have more tipping in the teeth, whether it is a young child or adolescent patient, uh, and um, very minimal sutural openings. And some expanders will have a lot of sutural openings with very minimal tipping of the teeth. So I am shooting for the ones that will be opening the bones and will be minimally tipping and bending alveolar bone.